Hey everybody, and welcome to so Super Comic Fun Time. Something's in the box. What is this, episode 5? Episode 6? It'll be on the description. Anyway, I wanted to kind of give a, an idea of how big this box is. So it's about the width of my hand. So for me, this is like the gem of the year, the omnibus I've been waiting for since... Um, before I knew it was coming out even back in, um, I think I mentioned it in one of my other shows, uh, the Omnibus Report, possibly when I did my report on this, let's see, that's upside down to your perspective. So to me, this is the gem of the year. This is the crown of Kirby 100. This is the fourth world omnibus. Now, I remember in 2015 when I was looking through Amazon, I saw that they came out in what, 2011, 2013, somewhere in there. It was a few years before, maybe it was as early as 2009, but they came out with a four volume set of the fourth world omnibus. And I was like so bummed out because the first one was out of print and the price was really, really quite high. And then, Earlier this year, I saw this when I was trolling Amazon for for omnibuses, and this was there, and it's it's here now. Oh, I'm so excited about this! I cannot tell you that it is 12:12, the day of this release. Now, I saw some people online got it early, but they're like professionals, comic book people. I, I saw uh, not an unboxing. So, but, oh, let's, let's open it up. Look at this. This is kind of weird to me, though, is like, I don't know how the tape gets like that. I guess, like, the box is kind of put together wrong. So, but I don't think, I think the good thing about books is they're fairly durable. It's like if you order a CD and it comes cracked and you really want to watch that movie as soon as, I mean, a DVD, then, like, you have to send it back. I mean, especially today it's not so bad because you have streaming and you can probably get it streaming. But back in the day... Like when Netflix first started, if you were really eager to watch a movie and they sent it to you and there's something wrong with the disc, you had to send it back. But with a book, you don't really have that problem most of the time. So let's see. Let's see. Here we go. Okay. And yeah, I... My hastily drawn cartoon was like just words today. I was thinking all day what I should draw and then I just thought, let's just do words because it's easier. So look at that. Look at that first view inside the box. There's Mr. Evil himself, Dark Side. I wonder what that is. See, the thing about this is like, you know, I kind of know through osmosis, look how thick that spine is. Yeah, that's like, you know, my hand compressed, it's, uh, it's still bigger than it, but it's still like, look at that. Ooh, look at this. The man himself, Jack Kirby. Ah, isn't it beautiful? Oh, look at this. Let's put that down here. Wow. Yeah, so anyways, like I said, I wanted to open it, and I just kind of saw, I, I was going to just draw a four, but then I thought I should get the Kirby 100 in there, you know, I mean, this is, you only have a hundredth birthday once, even if you're not around to enjoy it. Thank you, Mr. Kirby. Thank you, Mr. Kirby. Thank you, Mr. Kirby. Look at this. Oh, it's so big. It's so big. Let's see what I can do with this camera. I'm getting some editing skills, but you know, I can't quite get it in there. So let's go ahead up a little bit more with my apparatus and see if we can get this whole thing in here. And hopefully I can edit out some things if it's too much of a distraction. But you know what? I'm just going to put this video up probably as it is. I might cut a little bit out. You know, I should like go to that. You know, I was uh, watching a video today by What's Their Names, the ones who do Earthling Theater, and it was about, you know, what went wrong with Man of Steel. And I thought it was going to be a joke, but um, 
I can't remember his name, but the guy who does the videos, does the voiceovers, he called Perry White, Perry Mason. So I left a comment under my Maple Bob account there about the secret origin where Superman originally went to, uh, was con uh, accused of murder. So Perry Mason got him off and he started his life as a paralegal, but it didn't make sense for a lawyer to have superpowers. So uh, they retconned it to a, a newspaper, the Daily Planet. But then like years later, Marvel took that idea for She-Hulk. Yeah, it's kind of lame. Oh, can you feel the power emanating off of it? Oh, just look at this mish of colors. This is like, I, I wanted to kind of recreate this, but you know, in the, in the time I have to do that and get the video up, and open the box and look at it, look at it. Look at all those pages. Oh my God, this is lore. This is what Gandalf reads when he's trying to figure out about the one ring, you know, they had their own Jack Kirby. Sorry, had to take a sip of something, I'm breathless. Oh, let's just look at this. And yeah, the other thing is, like, I realize, like, I've absorbed a lot of uh, the fourth world via osmosis. Like, I know it's not a place, like, if you watch the back issues where they talk about uh, Final Crisis and, like, you know, the two guys other than Cell are trying to figure out what's, uh, what's the fourth world. But it's kind of like a, a place outside of our regular space time. But I still don't quite understand it, so I expect this tome will finally enlighten me to all of these great characters. I mean, you know, I've been covering the Dark Side War, and so I have some idea of who Dark Side is. I have really no idea who High Father is. I read a few good stories with um, uh, Mr. Miracle, who I think that's Mr. Miracle. I don't know. It might not be. Um, in fact, yeah, maybe it's not. It's like he's got almost like little bat ears there. So should we take the plastic off? Oh my goodness, look at this. Oh. Let's see, gotta be careful because we don't want to damage the book in any way. Oh, there it goes. Oh, yes, look at that. Oh my God. Oh, this is just so awesome. And look, I can see sort of a character's hands down here. Let's see, Jack Kirby and Royer. Don't know who Royer is. Wow. And then look at that face. That almost looks like Dark Side again over here. But I, I just don't know what's going on here. This is obviously from a story within here someplace. And wow. Wow! An epic for our times. In the 1970s, legendary creator Jack the King Kirby revolutionized the comic book medium with a sweeping multi-series saga that encompassed impossible new worlds, iconic new characters, and sweeping new mythologies. He called it the Fourth World. And its debut elicited unprecedented levels of excitement and anticipation from comic readers everywhere. In honor of this extraordinary talent centennial, DC Comics is proud to present an all new edition of this towering achievement in graphic literature. The Fourth World by Jack Kirby Omnibus collects for the first time in a single hardcover volume Kirby's complete chronicles from the pages of Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen the New Gods, The Forever People, and Mr. Miracle, as well as climactic graphic novel, The Hunger Dogs. Oh, I didn't know. I don't, I'll have to go back and look at my, uh, my video and blog post for the Omnibus Report. I don't remember about The Hunger Dogs. This transformative tome also includes illuminating essays from acclaimed author and former Kirby apprentice Mark Evanier and celebrated comic talent and avowed Kirby fan Walter Simonson, and you'll remember we looked at his Thor book a few uh, weeks ago, as well as a special selection of Kirby pencils, profiles, pinups, and more. Future generations will come to see Kirby as an exciting mythmaker whose message was 
life-affirming Los Angeles Times, richly complex entertainment week weekly, some of Kirby's most innovative personal work executed with spectacular imagery, highly recommended library journal, a world well worth exploring, Newark Star Ledger. The primar primal simplicity of Kirby's work retains its power three decades on, book list. This will blow your dot, 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 mind, the Boston Globe. Wow. Oh. So here the corner's a little bent, but what are you gonna do? Wow. And the word comes. Taru. Oh yeah, and there's a Metron right on uh, the Mobius chair. Oh, I like this. I like how they played with the, uh, like here you've got the orange and, uh, well, I guess it's mostly orange, orange, dark orange and light orange. And here you have kind of a yellow and blue. The Fourth World. Omnibus by Jack Kirby. Wow. Wow. The Newsboy Legion. Wow. I just feel like all this power emanating from this book. It is so cool. Oh, Deadly Dark Side. So let's see. It starts with Jimmy Olsen. We've got a few Jimmy Olsons. Because, you know, like most people who are longtime Kirby fans know that when he first went to DC, he, uh, he started building his myth in the pages of their lowest selling book at the time, which was uh, Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen. At least that's the myth, and I'm sticking to it. And then Super War, The Forever People. I'm kind of just skipping around. The New Gods number two, Oh Deadly Dark Side. This is going to be so exciting to read. Oh my God. Death is the Black Racer. So like a lot of these characters, uh, my viewers will have met by watching the uh, Dark Side War uh, book that I, I covered. Wow. Wow! Funky Flashman. Brigadoom. You know, one of my favorite TV episodes is Briga... What was it called? Oh, well, never mind. Apocalypse Trap. This looks like so much fun. Then, like, okay, so, like, all these are the books, right? So it goes all the way to The Hunger Dogs, which is the graphic novel that's set on the back. Even Gods Must Die from the New Gods reprint series uh, number six. That's from 1984. So let's see, what's the last one from the 70s here? That's 73, 73, 73, Murder Lodge, Mr. Miracle 17, and Wild Wild Wedding Guests, Mr. Miracle 18. So that's the last one from the 70s. Then we get this one from 1984, Even Gods Must Die. Then we have The Hunger Dogs from March 1985. Then we have The Mother Box Files, which probably tells us about the characters. The Art of Jack Kirby and Biographies. So here we have an introduction. So is this going to be the, yep, that's Mark Evanier. So this is probably from the older edition, the four volume set. And then this is probably Walt Simonson. Yep, from 2007. Look at that. Ah, wow, look, Superman in, with Jack Kirby. That's kind of cool. Now it's my understanding that people would, um, redraw his Superman, at least the face. I, I don't know anything about that. I don't know if any original art exists of his Superman before it was rewritten, written and drawn by Jack Kirby. Wow. Wow, look at this. Oh my God. Doesn't this look awful? Awful. What am I saying? Awesome. <sighs> Wow, I can't wait to read this and know what's really going on here. So here we have Superman. So I wonder if this is High Father. He looks kind of like the guy from Dr. Seuss. Wow, he's sitting up in a nest. Wow. Wow. So cool. So cool. Oh, 
So yeah, I don't know what to say. I am in complete awe and shock, shock and awe, shock and awe, shock and awe. And it's 12, 12. This is like my Christmas. This is like, I'm so happy to have this. I can't tell you. Oh my God. And just think like in just a few more days, uh, the days get longer again. I can't wait for that. Oh. Uh, Wow. We are so lucky. I don't know, like, like this art form didn't exist f until like, you know, I guess they had what one sheets and stuff like that. I read our God's Wear Spandex uh, by, is it Christopher Knowles a few years ago? And it kind of goes through everything that led to the comic books, then comic strips and papers. Then they put those together and then people started doing original content and it just kind of blew up in the thirties. So yeah, a truly American art form that's not even a hundred years old yet. Wow, there's so many pages. I'm just like going handsfuls at a time. Somebody uh, mentioned in my comments a few months ago, like during one of my last omnibuses to like go all the way through, like they want to see what's in the back too. Wow. Yeah, I am like, I am like overwhelmed. I could faint. If I faint, I think I'll just like show it. Maybe it'll get me some views, but wow. So yeah, that's Mr. Miracle. So I don't know who the guy on the cover is unless he has a different costume at some point. There's so much to learn. Like this guy I know from that uh, 80s book that I think I did. A, I think when I did my, my omnibus report, since I didn't have anything to show, I showed that. That was before I was coming to my drawing table and using that for my... My camera bin, They're so beautiful, lower level control bubbles. Wow. So I don't think, I think we're still in the uh, Jimmy Olsen era. Oh, here's the forever people. Does it tell me what number it is? Read, stop. Mantis is the cry of the great city at the mercy of an evil power vampire. Don't go back. Oh, go back to your far domain, Infinity Man. Mantis is your master here. So here we have Mark Moonrider, Big Bear, Vink in the Black, Seraphan, and Beautiful Dreamer. I have no idea. Our new ages, adding to the action, our new agers. I have no idea who they are. So, oh, this is number two. Okay. So, yeah. Wow. Nice splash page. Okay. Read life versus anti-life. Isn't this cool, guys? I wish I was doing this live. I wish I had a better camera setup. Oh, there's High Father. So I don't know who the guy was in the nest. Yep, I know, and it, I know nothing about him. I haven't read any stories with him yet. I've only read like the first story or so in that other. Uh, New God's book from the 80s. I showed you the collection that collect the 80s. So Jimmy Olsen is there and so is his pal Superman. So yeah, I'm not sure. This might be a backup story in something. Wow, I didn't know there was so much Superman in this stuff. Strike Overlord. Let's see, there's, oh, this is a Mr. Miracle. Okay. Also, to know her is to hate her. Granny goodness. So, death flashes out. So, I'm not sure what book this is part of. Oh, here we go. Here's the cover. Cool. Also meet Granny goodness. So, this is also the second issues. I seem to be hitting on the second issue covers. I am overlord. I create, I destroy. Now I destroy. Scott Free dies. Wow. Isn't this cool? Oh my God. This is so awesome. Wow. Look at this. Jeez. Wow. What am I looking at even? The big boom. 
everyone's in this one. It's a blast. So we're still got Jimmy Olsen. So I don't know how long into the run that they continued. Don't be a chicken. Read all about Doomsday. Oh my God, you guys, this is so good. Wow. Oh, here's Orion. Maybe that's who's on the cover. There's the Black Racer. He's got skis. I just read a story with him in it. It was a Flash story uh, from the Jeff Johns era, uh, Volume 2. I read a lot of stuff in my um, on my tablet that I got from Comixology when I'm on the bus because the tablet is like, I'm not going to take this on the bus. Can you imagine? Jeez. Everybody look at me. I mean, not, not that I care. I don't really care what other people think, but it's like... I would have my regular stuff I take for work and this. Somebody's got a gun to Jimmy Olsen's head. Wow. Paranoid pill. The paranoid pill. Huh. This is like just fascinating stuff. I mean, I feel like I'm getting all of this insight just like glancing at it into Jack Kirby's psyche. So I think we're close to another cover, another Forever People. This one is number four. Meet Desaad. I think I've run into him someplace. The name's familiar, at least. Wow, Happy Land. Wow, can you imagine this? Can you imagine having this in front of you and paging through it and talking on a camera? Then sharing it with people on YouTube. Oh my God, this, I'm blinded by the colors. Wow. All of my senses feel like they're in overload. The New Gods, Kirby's fourth world of the New Gods. I really like, you know, I'm one of these people who kind of like can go both ways. Like I can just understand the concept of something, but if there is a concrete answer, then I like that too. So if there's a concrete answer to what the fourth world is, I'm hoping it's in here. Look at this. This is cool. I like the curves. And then like, I also know, like, I think the reason I can go either way is because I know there is no definitive answer to anything. Wow. Another one of these, um, what would you call it? You would call it, um, it's the work that Hot Pink does. Wow. Don Rickles. Oh my God. Wow! I love Don Rickles. I think he just died this last year. That's too bad. But look, Don Rickles. I had no idea Don Rickles was in here. Rushing towards the greatest climax ever seen in comics. Jack Kirby says, don't ask, just buy it. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Wow. Wow! Oh my God. Well, the real Don Rickles panic. I think I probably know that Don Rickles appeared in a, in a Jack Kirby story, but geez, if I could remember. Wow, so cool, so cool, so cool, so cool. Another Forever People. I think there was a British show called, that, that, that was called The Tomorrow People. I remember in the early days of DVD, like I, the second volume of that was available at Best Buy. And I didn't want to buy it unless I could get the first volume. And now I've still never seen it. So, wake the sleeping princes, say the magic word, win $1,000. So, like, did the forever people... Look, that's Doomsday. We saw that in... You know, I didn't show it to you, but in, um, in like, World Without a Superman, what's his name? The mechanical, the cyborg Superman, he puts... He puts Doomsday on a rock and blasts him into space. So weird. I mean, that's not really Doomsday. He doesn't have the little spiky things, but that is just so... Look how long that arm is. Orion, the new gods. Wow. Oh, guys, I know like some of you like to see all the way to the end of the book, so we'll just go faster, I guess. Got some Egyptian stuff. Werewolves. So, like, Superman was really popular then. Like, I don't think Batman was to the level of popularity he is today. I, I haven't seen Batman throughout this volume yet, but Superman was really still, he was still, like, number one in the 70s. People hadn't given up, you know, we hadn't become 
all kinds of cynical and ironic. You know, that looks kind of cool. I like that cover. Wow, 48 pages, only 25 cents. So what do you guys think? Are you getting this? Are you living vicariously through me? I, I would do that. If I wasn't doing this channel and, oh man, if I hadn't have, uh, you know, Age of Ultron, like, I know a lot of people don't like that movie. I, I don't know why, or like they say, it's good. It's not as good as the Avengers. It was freaking awesome, you know? Okay, it's got problems. Yeah, uh, Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch are nothing like in the comic books. Who cares? Quicksilver dies. Who cares? I mean, he could still come back. It's a comic book movie. And like, yeah, maybe he'll come back in the next one. And, you know, he really didn't have very much of a developed character anyways, did he? But it was just so cool. I like that one scene where... Um, those two scientists are in the background and they're taking a selfie with uh, Iron Man at the, at the, you know, he's talking to, I, th I think Jarvis is still dead. And, uh, but he like realizes that something is blocking the nuclear launch codes that Ultron is trying to, to launch. And like, there's two scientists in the background. It's the coolest thing. Wow. Wow. Is that Modoc? No, Modoc's a Marvel character. Wow. Oh my God, look at this. This book is so big. We're a little more than halfway through, so hopefully you've stuck with me. If you haven't, um, uh, if you have stuck this far and got to go, I, I understand. Wow. Dark Side looks so different in the Dark Side War. Not that that's a problem or anything. Oh, there's Dead Man. I know Dead Man primarily from um, Brightest Day, which I enjoyed a lot. Really like Brightest Day. Uh, and I think it's because it didn't have a Green Lantern in it. I guess I might not be a Green Lantern fan. I mean, I liked Rebirth. I didn't like the Sinestro War. I, he's in a cube. But I, I always want to read it again and, and see... Uh, See if I can make sense of it. I know there's some to t t toy ins tie-ins. I liked how it began, but I liked Rebirth, read the Sinestro War. I got confused, I don't know, like three or four issues in, and I didn't know what was happening. I might, like, enjoy it again. So all these people, all these pages. Wow. Look at those sailors. That's a cool scene. I mean, a cool drawing, the way she's just holding them. They're saluting while they're kind of in midair. It's cool. I don't know. Wow. Well, we're getting close to the end. I, I mean, I don't know what to say. Like, all of the talky areas of my head are broken by all of this art that's flooding them. Devil's Alley. Mr. Miracle, Super Escape Artist. I think he would might have been the most popular in the 70s. I really don't know. It's like you hear different things, but I always heard like the James Bond movie on Her Majesty's Secret Service was a flop, but it was really the highest grossing movie of the year. And I think it's like the best James Bond movie of all of them. But a lot of people think just because George Lazenby did one movie that there was something wrong with it. So now are we in the 80s? Hard to tell. This looks like something from the old Batman series. You know, when they would like tie him to a, some kind of death trap or something, Batman and Robin. Armageddon. The final, and in the final analysis, even gods must die. So what else do we have here? So here we've got some covers, I guess. It's like, yeah, I don't, I don't really, yeah, it's going to be interesting to like go back to this beginning and see the origin of these characters and understand how they've evolved. Maybe even Final Crisis will make sense. Like, I like the beginning of that book too, but as it went on, it just got like very, I got very lost. The Hunger Dogs. So here we are in the 80s. This is like, it's just like the coda to his new gods. Is this what he wanted to? 
finish up. They gave him a chance in the 80s. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. But it's so interesting. Is like, for whatever reason, not knowing anything about it, I thought, I thought the new gods were, um, uh, how do you say, I thought they were separate from the DC universe, even though they were introduced in Jimmy Olsen. I thought, like, you know, there's like just a thread and then it follows to this fourth world. And I thought the fourth world was its own separate thing. I had no idea how integrated it was into the DC universe right from the beginning. So I learned something today. I learned, loined. Uh, here, this looks like a throwback. It looks like a better version of some of that other art, like, you know, the collage art. That's what I was trying to think. There's uh, somebody on Twitter and YouTube I follow called Hot Pink something or other, and she does collages. Um, And they're very good collages, too. They're very interesting. Okay, so then I want to go through and give people who want to know what's at the back of the book. Here's the mother box files. So look, page 1484, 1516. So this is a huge book. So there's Metron in the chair. I wonder if he knows it'll be taken from him in uh, 30 years by Batman. So yeah, here we get like who these people are. Beautiful dreamer. Big Barda, I think she's uh, married to Mr. Miracle. Black Racer, like the skis, like, I remember like a Hercules show where Hercules was on skis. It was some cartoon show in the 70s, but I only saw, ever saw one or two issues, but it was like, I like this so much, I want to see it. And like, you know, either uh, it came on too early or too late, depending on when I went to school. Funky Flashman, he said to be based on Stan Lee, and Stan Lee felt hurt by the depiction. Granny Goodness, I wonder who she was based on. <laughs> you kind of wonder. Hi, Father, wonder who he might be. Calabac. I mean, you know, like... Um, I think in uh, Marvel, The Untold Story, Kirby's original plan is he wanted to kill off Thor and the old Asgardian gods and like have this be part of the Marvel new, uh, universe. But uh, he just wasn't getting any love. And I don't, you know, even afterwards, it's hard to believe like a guy who basically founds your company and revives the, revives the comic book industry and is good for everyone, just gets so screwed on the money. I mean, eventually he got some, but I mean, he had a fight for what he got, and I don't think he ever got his due. So here's some of the sketches. Oh, this is just so beautiful. Like I say, this is, to me, the crowning gem of 2017 omnibuses. So... I don't know, you know, if you got the four volumes, that might be less unwieldy. Like, look at this. It's like just lifting the book up itself is a workout. So, oh, tell me what you think. Oh, my goodness. I usually stand for these table, I mean, for this, uh, for these videos because um, I have to lean over so far uh, from where my camera is. I, I need better equipment, no doubt about it. But so tell me what you think. Are, are you getting this? Do you have the original four volume set and you're happy with that? I can understand preferring the four volume set because look at this is the four volume set in one volume. And, you know, I mean, it'll keep you fit. That's a, that's a good thing. Oh, my God. The art overload. Whoa, I am going to dream tonight. Oh, tell me if you guys, if you watch this whole video and you ha have dreams and uh, wow, wow, 12, 12, 2017. This is the day, the day this book finally came out. Oh, oh now I could collapse. Thank you guys. Thank you for watching. Please um, um, subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. And, uh, you know, comment down below. Tell me what you think. Uh, maybe you're more familiar with the fourth world. Maybe you were there when it was coming out. Like, were people disappointed in it? Was it a bigger hit than, than was let on? It was just maybe the higher-ups at DC were expecting, like, 
the whole thing that happened at Marvel in the early 60s to happen in DC. And since they were already, pretty, you know, they were still the biggest at that time. And uh, maybe they thought, well, if we bring on Jack Kirby, he'll like do for us what he did for Marvel. And since we're already this tall, we'll be this much taller. And maybe, maybe it was just an expectations game. I don't know. I, I am duly impressed, you know, with time behind me. I was too young to be reading or buying books at this point. I was like six, seven, eight years old um, around the time this was coming out. And I depended on my parents to get me comic books. I usually got, you know, the uh, packs they used to, you could get like five packs sometimes for like a dollar twenty-five or something like that. Maybe it was even cheaper. And then like as time wore on, then there were three packs and we would get those for Christmas, like stocking stuffers. And then really the thing that blew up for me that made comic books so important was when uh, Marvel published Star Wars and I got those for Christmas. And that like, I was already collecting the ones I had, but that's really what threw me into high gear, at least so far as I recall. That's my story for now, and I'm sticking to it until I remember more details. So again, uh, like, subscribe, uh, give us a thumbs up. I love you guys. Um, we are going to, we are going to dig into this. Oh my God. Uh, talk to you later. Super comic fun time out.